Hi there, you are tuned into Maths with A. Raj. Today we are learning about fractions. We are going to be comparing fractions by filling in the less than, greater than or equal to sign. We're going to be ordering fractions by rewriting them from the biggest to the smallest or vice versa. That means from the smallest to the biggest. We're going to be adding fractions and we're going to be subtracting fractions. Now, when I talk about fractions, I'm talking about a symbol that has a numerator and a denominator. Now, I'm going to be referring a lot to numerator and denominator. So it's important to remember that the numerator is the number that's written on top of the divided line. And the denominator is the number that's written below the divided line. Just remember an easy way for you not to forget denominator has a d so d for denominator and d for down so the number that's written down below is the denominator <clears throat> okay we have fractions of five eighths and two eighths now boys and girls in order to do any of these above, compare, order, add, or subtract fractions, we have to ensure that our denominators of the fractions are the same. All right, so we ha must have a common denominator. In this case, both the fractions have a denominator of 8. So in a case where our denominators are the same, we simply concentrate on the numerator. So here the numerator is 5 and on the second fraction the numerator is 2. Now if I'm going to compare, okay, look at the diagram. If I look at 5 eighths, you can see a bigger portion is colored in and 2 eighths has a very small portion that's colored in. So by looking at the diagram alone, you can see that 5 eighths is a bigger fraction. So 5 eighths is bigger than or greater than 2 eighths. However, we don't have the diagram or the drawing with us all the time, especially in our exams. So in that case, we look at the numerator 5 and 2. Now 5 is a bigger number than 2 and because our denominators are the same, we will say that 5 eighths is greater than 2 eighths. All right, just remember, we concentrate on the numerator only after our denominators are both the same. Right, now if we have to order 5 eighths and 2 eighths from the smallest to the biggest, again, we have to know or we have to ensure that our denominators are the same. So both my denominators are 8. In this case, we look at the numerators only now, 2 and 5. 2 is the smallest fraction 2 eighths is the smallest fraction and because 5 is a bigger number, 5 eighths will be your biggest fraction. So 2 eighths will be written first and 5 eighths last. When you're adding fractions now, a simple rule to remember is that we need to ensure that our denominators are the same before adding. And when we add fractions, please boys and girls, you only add the numerator and not the denominator. So if I'm going to look and see that my denominators are the same, that means now I look only at my numerators, which is 5 and 2, and 5 plus 2 is 7. If 5 plus 2 is 7, then 5 eighths plus 2 eighths is equal to 7 eighths. Again, we only add the numerator. The denominator does not get added. The denominator stays the same as the denominators in your sum. All right. The same goes for subtraction of fractions. Ensure that your denominators are both the same. Once we know that our denominators in both the fractions have the same number, we concentrate only on the numerator, 5 and 2. 5 minus 2 is 3. So 5 eighths minus 2 eighths is 3 eighths. Again, just like addition, we only subtract the numerator. We only add the numerator in addition 
And in subtraction, we only subtract the numerator. The denominators must stay the same as the denominators in the sum. All right, that will be easy, boys and girls. Now, notice how easy it was to work with fractions, comparing, ordering, adding, or subtracting these fractions when our denominators have the same value. However, look at the next two fractions. We have four-fifths and we have six-tenths. Here we have fractions that have different denominators. Now it's going to be a little bit tricky to work with fractions comparing them or adding them if our denominators are not the same. So what do we do? We need to know or find our lowest common multiple. In order to find our lowest common multiple, we need to know the multiple multiples of our denominators. So in this case, we have a denominator of 5. We need to know the multiples of 5. And here we have the denominator of 10, so we need to find the multiples of 10. Now you notice that I have written my Multiples of 5 in one column, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, and the multiples of 10 in the second column, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. I have a lot of common numbers. I have 10 as a common number. I have 20 as a common number. And if I had written numbers further down the line, I would have noticed that 30 and 40 and 50 and so on will all be common numbers of multiples of 5 and 10. However, we need to look for the lowest common multiple. Why? I mean, we could use any common multiple if we need to, but it's easier to work with smaller numbers, especially when you're calculating, when you are multiplying or dividing. It's easier to divide or, or to multiply smaller numbers rather than the bigger numbers. So here we notice that the common number is 10 and it's also the lowest common multiple. All right. So we will decide to use 10 as our lowest common multiple. Now boys and girls, because we're dealing with fractions, these and we need to have our denominators to be to have the same value. It means that this lowest common multiple, also known as LCM, now becomes my lowest common denominator. All right. Remember, I need to change my denominators for it to be to have the same value. So my lowest common multiple is also my lowest common denominator. Now, look at four fifths. We said the lowest common denominator should be 10. 4 fifths does not have a denominator of 10. However, I can find the equivalent fraction to 4 fifths to, to change 4 fifths into a fraction that has a denominator of 10. And how do I do that? I know that 5 times 2 is 10, but whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do the same to the numerator. So if I have to multiply 5 by 2 to get 10 as my denominator, I have to multiply 4 by 2 to get 8 as my numerator. Right. Now, what I have done, boys and girls, I haven't changed the fraction. I haven't changed the size of the fraction. I have only changed the way I wrote 4 fifths. I wrote the equivalent of 4 fifths. And the equivalent fraction to 4 fifths is actually 8 tenths. Simply by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 2. Right, it's the same size fraction. It's just written with a different denominator. Now that I know 4 fifths can be written as 8 tenths and my denominator now is 10, I need to look at the second fraction, 6 tenths. Now, 6 tenths already has a denominator of 10. The denominator in both the fractions are now the same. It has the same value, 10. So that means I don't need to do anything to 6 tenths. I don't need to find any equivalent fractions to 6 tenths. I simply leave 6 tenths as it is. Now that our denominators are the same, we concentrate on the numerator 8 and 6. 8 is a bigger number than 6. 
Therefore, 8 tenths is greater than 6 tenths. Now, this also means that 8 tenths is the equivalent of 4 fifths. So, writing 8 tenths in its original form was actually 4 fifths. So, if 8 tenths is greater than 6 tenths, that means 4 fifths is also greater than 6 tenths. Now, to add 4 fifths plus 6 tenths. Remember, 4 fifths in the equivalent form with a denominator of 10 can be written as 8 tenths. So I've already worked out that 4 fifths can be written as 8 tenths. I'm just going to write 8 tenths plus 6 tenths as my equation. Again, boys and girls, we have learned that if our denominators are the same, we simply add the numerator alone, 8 plus 6. 8 plus 6 is 14. The denominator does not get added. The denominator stays the same denominator as it is in the sum. So we don't say 10 plus 10 is 20. All right, 8 tenths plus 6 tenths is 14 tenths. The denominator does not get added. Remember that. Now, in most cases, they would want you to simplify or write the answer in the simplest form. 14 out of 10 or 14 tenths is not written in the simplest form. We can see that because we see that the numerator has a bigger number or a bigger value than the denominator. Now, notice something. 14 is actually 10 plus 4. So 14 tenths is 10 tenths plus 4 tenths. Now previously we have learned that when a numerator and the denominator have the same value, like 10 tenths, 2 halves, 3 thirds, 4 quarters, etc. It means that that fraction is a whole, one whole. Okay, so in this case 10 tenths forms one whole and we are left with four tenths on the other side so ten tenths can be written as one whole and four tenths can remain as one whole but four tenths is still not written in its simplest form I can see that there is a number that can be divided into four and into ten okay a same number that can be divided into four and into ten without leaving any remainders, and that number is 2. So 4 can be divided by 2, 10 can also be divided by the same 2, and therefore 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. The one whole stays the same, but 4 tenths can, can further be simplified into 2 fifths, and that, boys and girls, 1 and 2 fifths, is the answer that is written in the simplest form. Right, let's look at subtraction of the same fractions. Four fifths, as we said, is already equivalent to eight tenths. And how did we get that? By multiplying the numerator and the denominator both by the number two. Right, now eight minus six. Again, we're concentrating only on the numerators. Eight minus six is equal to 2. The 10, you do not subtract the denominators. So you cannot say 10 minus 10 is 0. The 10 remains the same in your answer as it is in your sum. Okay, so we, when we're adding and subtracting, we only add or subtract numerators alone, provided that the denominators stay, are all the same. 2 tenths is our answer. However, 2 tenths is not written in its simplest form. We need to find a common divisor that can go into 2 and into 10 without leaving any remainders. Can you tell me what that number is? Yes, the number is 2. 2 can go into 2 and 2 can go into 10 without any remainders. So 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1 and 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. And your answer or your answer which is 2 tenths in its simplest form is actually 1 fifth. And there boys and girls we have 
we have compared four fifths to six tenths. We have added four fifths and six tenths to get one and two fifths. And we have uh, subtracted four fifths minus six tenths to get one fifth as an answer. If you have to rearrange from the smallest to the biggest, which will you choose? Four fifths or six tenths? If you choose four fifths as your biggest number, all right, you will be correct. So the biggest fraction will be four fifths, as four fifths is actually eight tenths in, in its, written in its equivalent form. And the smallest fraction will be six tenths, because six tenths remains six tenths in its equivalent form. All right, now let's look at a word problem that we have on fractions. A shoe salesman offers you three quarters discount on a pair of shoes and two thirds discount on another pair of shoes. Remember, both the pairs of shoes have the same price. Which pair of shoe will be cheaper? Now remember, the shoes are the same price. However, the salesman is offering you three quarter of discount on one pair and two thirds discount on the second pair. The more discount you get, it means the cheaper the shoe. So now we have to compare three quarters of a discount to two thirds of a discount. Right, which fraction is bigger? The bigger the fraction, the bigger the discount, the cheaper the shoe. We can't just compare three quarters to two thirds simply because our denominators are different. So now we need to find equivalent fractions to make our denominators the same value. In order to do that, we need to find our multiples of, let's start with the smaller denominator, which is 3. And the multiples of 3 are 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and so on. Now you don't need to go too far ahead in your counting patterns of 3, because if you look at 4 and 3, they are reasonably smaller numbers and we don't need to go on to very big multiples. All right, now we look at our multiples of 4 and that's 0, 4, 8, 12. I stop at 12 because straight away I realize that the number 12 is a common number in both my multiples. Not only is it a common number, it's also the lowest number that is common. Now remember, your lowest common multiple becomes your lowest common denominator. And LCD stands for lowest common denominator. Which means now I need to find the equivalent fraction of 3 quarter to make it a fraction that has 12 as a denominator. And I need to do the same with two-thirds. I need to find an equivalent fraction to two-thirds that has a denominator of 12. And how do I do that? I need to know that 4 times 3 gives you 12. Whatever I do to the denominator, I need to do the same to the numerator. So if I'm going to multiply 4 by 3 to get 12, I need to multiply 3 by 3 to get 9. Now I'm going to take two-thirds. I need to change the denominator to 12. In order to do that, I need to multiply 3 by 4. So 3 times 4 is 12, and what I do to the denominator, I must do to the, the same to the numerator. So 2 times 4 is 8. Now I have 3 quarters written as 9 twelfths and 2 thirds written as 8 twelfths. 9 is a bigger number than 8, which means that 9 twelfths is greater than 8 twelfths. However, 9 twelfths in its original form, okay, is equivalent to 3 quarters, which means that 3 quarters, if 9 twelfths is greater than 8 twelfths, it means also now that 3 quarters is greater than 8 twelfths because 8 twelfths is actually 2 thirds. So 3 quarter of the discount is a bigger discount than 2 thirds of the discount. Remember, 3 quarters of the discount, the bigger the discount, the, the cheaper the shoe. Okay. And now we have to rearrange these fractions in ascending order. Ascending order means writing it from the smallest 
to the biggest. The opposite of ascending is descending. And descending is the opposite now. And instead of smallest to biggest, it means you need to rearrange it from the biggest to the smallest. However, we are going to do what this question asks us to do. And that means, and that is rearranging it from smallest to biggest, ascending order. Right, now notice, you can't simply rearrange fractions if your denominators are all different values or all have different values. In order to make it a uh, the same value, we need to know our multiples of 3, 4, and 2. If you can see in your first column, these are your multiples of 3. These are your multiples of 4 in the middle column and your multiples of 2 in the third column. What do you notice? Can you find a common number and also the lowest common number in all three multiples? If you have found 12 as your lowest and common number in all three multiples, then that means your LCD, your lowest common denominator now, should be 12. Which means that I need to find an equivalent fraction for all these fractions and rewrite them with a denominator of 12. Let's take one third. How do I write a 3 or how do I change a 3 into a 12? By multiplying it by 4. So if I say 3 times 4 is 12, then I must say 1 times 4 as well and 1 times 4 is 4. So one third is equivalent to 4 twelfths. Let's take 9 quarters. 9 quarters. If I need to change the 4 into a 12, I need to multiply by 3. What I do to the denominator, I must do to the numerator. So if 4 times 3 is 12, then 9 times 3 is 27. Okay, notice that I'm not simplifying this fraction at, as yet. It's easier to rearrange or to order fractions if I'm looking at my numerator and denominators that are the, the denominators must be the same. Okay, so 9 quarters equivalent fraction is 27 over 12. Now let's take half. In order to change 2 to 12, remember I'm changing all the denominators to 12 because I it's easier to work with fractions with the same denominator. 2 times 6 is 12, and therefore I need to multiply 1 by 6 as well, and 1 times 6 is 6. Now look at it. All three denominators are the same. It means now we are going to concentrate only on the numerator, 4, 27, and 6. As a number 4, is smaller than 27 or 6. So I would say that the smallest fraction here is 4 twelfths. But 4 twelfths is also equivalent to 1 third. So if I'm going to write 4 twelfths first, I would rather write it in its original form, which is 1 third. If 4 twelfths is the smallest fraction, that means 1 third is the smallest fraction. Now we are looking at 27 and 6. 27 is much, much bigger than 6. So I would say that 6 is the next smallest fraction. However, 6 twelfths is equivalent to 1 half. So I'm going to write 6 twelfths in its original form as 1 half. Right. And that means now that 6 twelfths is the second smallest. Now for my biggest fraction... We are left with 27 over 12, but 27 over 12 is equivalent to 9 quarters. And instead of writing 27 over 12, I'm going to write 9 quarters <coughs> as my answer. And here you go, the fractions that are written in ascending order. <coughs> Just to recap, in order to compare order, add or subtract fractions with denominators that are different. We need to find the lowest common multiple. This lowest common multiple becomes the lowest common denominator when we are dealing with fractions. I hope you have learned from this video and I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please look forward to more videos of mine. If you subscribe to my channel, 
and if you press a bell icon you will be notified every time i upload a new video so look forward to my new videos from me it's goodbye enjoy your day